Welcome to the Explore Composites Materials Library. This is laminate sample number three, an e-glass infused laminate with two millimeter soric core. This is the laminate schedule. Shows 7781 woven and 12 ounce biax on either side of the two millimeter core. And the core is the infusion media as well. It's gonna start with all the materials laid out and a clean table with adhesive Teflon on it. Clean. And I'm gonna stick down the first ply, which is this 7781 woven fiberglass. It's about nine ounces, 300 grams per square meter. It's a tight weave and it's hard to lay up wet, but it infuses beautifully. It's a little wrinkly, so I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to try and use as little spray adhesive on this as possible. It's not really necessary because it's on a flat panel. Some of this material is a little stiff, especially the biaxial, and so it'll, uh, it'll want to pop up. This is about as simple an infusion as you can get. Just a flat panel. There's the Soric core. This is a non-woven material with micro balloons knitted into little honeycomb-like cells. And the resin channels um, flow, allow resin to flow between the honeycomb uh, bundles of microspheres. It's pretty heavy as cores go, but it's easy and it conforms nicely to curved surfaces without a lot of core fitting drama and it works as a very nice infusion medium. So here's some peel ply. Unfortunately this is some peel ply that had been around got all wrinkly so I'm spraying it down and smoothing it out. Wrinkles on the peel ply will just make the surface kinda nasty. Once I get it all spread out gonna get some strips of green infusion media that are going to form the flow side. This is the side the resin's gonna come in. And then on the other end, the uh, vacuum break this is a form by just a layer of peel ply as long as possible that will slow down the resin and allow the air to get out, but keep the resin from flowing too quickly. And a little piece of flow media on the other end. On the inlet side, I'm gonna use some small spiral wrap which I will eventually get over this tube and to make sure this doesn't they don't slide apart I like to wrap them with a little bit of masking tape just to, in case something goes wrong you don't want that tube pulling out of the spiral wrap and it smooths out the joint normally I put this under some peel ply so here just to make things easy I'm sticking it underneath the mesh you want peel ply over the top of spiral wrap so that it doesn't damage the bag. If you have just, just spiral wrap underneath the bag, you can have problems with the, the bag getting pushed into the spiral wrap. So I've got the outflow vacuum side on the far end. That's just a little uh, tail made of flow media wrapped around the tube. In this case, that should be fine. Taking a little risk here, putting the tacky tape on the Teflon in an ideal situation, the tacky tape would go down on the perimeter. Um, and I've done my own favorite mistake, which is making the bag just a little bit too small. But it should be okay. This is uh, about as quick and dirty as it gets. I'm hoping it'll come out all right. One thing when putting bags down on Fusion, you want to make sure there are no fibers laying under the tacky tape. So here I've got the catch pot, which hopefully I won't need. This provides a bit of a vacuum reservoir, and in case resin flows in, I put a pot in there to catch it, because it's a lot easier to get resin out of a pot than out of the, the catch pot itself. Um, spreading the bag out. I haven't clamped off the vacuum inlet yet, so I have an intentional leak. It's keeping the bag slack as I spread everything out, make sure it's nice, um, get all the tacky tape pressed down, 
or to make sure that the inlet side tube is pressed up against the edge of the soric. And here I'm putting a little adjustable clamp on the inlet side, clamp it off and they should bring the vacuum down finally. It's pretty cold while I'm working, so having some trouble with the tacky tape because I didn't leave myself quite enough bag. My pleats are a little small where the hoses go through and there's a tendency to lift up. But there it is, you can see the vacuum break. It's a couple inches between the, the vacuum side and here the flow side. That spiral wrap is pushed right up against the edge of the panel and the flow media there just provides a little extra. Here's my vac setup. I've got two, two vacuum pumps. I'll start off with the high vac pump. Switch over the low vac right before clamping off the resin. And now I'm mixing some resin. I'm going to pre-kit the resin out by weight. This is Pro Set 117 LV with a fast 210 hardener. It's a nice epoxy infusion resin. So now I'm mixing it up. I've made sure the table is warm. I put my little oven lid over the top and it's now about 80 degrees Fahrenheit and the resin is the same temperature. So I heated that up in a little uh, a little oven I got. And I'll mix it up carefully, being sure to scrape the sides of the pot and the bottom. I like to mix for about a minute. And this little cup screwed to the sheet of plywood there will be my support. Just put a fender washer in the bottom and uh, screw it there and it holds it nicely so the cup doesn't tip over. Having your cup tip over sucks. And I clamp it in carefully with that spring clamp and slowly open the resin inlet side. The hose got kind of kinked here, so I'm going to grab a pair of pliers and push it back. As you can see the resin flow in, work its way back into that little bit of extra. And all the air ideally would get out of that bit on the camera side of the inlet hose. So that air can come back and be a problem. And um, here it is. You can see that air escaping out. This is right up against the inlet hose through the resin, which is not ideal. So in a perfect world, there'd be nothing behind that inlet hose. But it's flowing. It'll flow pretty quickly initially because there's not much laminate to flow through. There it is flowing through the soric. You can see the cells. The white bits are the micro balloons and the resin channels. You can see little bubbles flowing through the clear areas around them. I like to draw lines if I'm concerned about time or just to keep track of things. And here I'm drawing one every minute. If this were warmer, which would be ideal, it would go a lot faster. But it does slow down as you flow through. I'm using this as about 20 inches between the inlet hose and the end of the panel, which is about as much as you want to go. There's some resin pooling around the inlet hose, which I, I should have avoided, but we're getting down in the bucket. And you can see the resin has filled the whole panel. That dashed line on the right is where I clamped off the inlet hose. And you can see how much all the excess resin that had built up in the panel flowed out after clamping it off. It's one reason I like to keep the pump on, uh, which is a really good idea. And, but I did switch over to a slightly lower vacuum pump, um, and that worked out okay. Here I'm taking it apart. Concerned there was a little air leak. I put this underneath my oven lid because it was cold, and I think I bumped something. Um, there's a piece of exposed soric in what is the upper left-hand corner of that panel from this view. And uh, for some reason, there was a little bit of air that came through there. I don't know if it was from fiber under the tacky tape or something else going on. That's something that I have to look into. Put the, putting the tacky tape on the Teflon is definitely a shortcut. And for something you care about, you shouldn't do that. So you can see a little bit of air came in. It looks like a sort of a fern pattern in there. I think the exposed edge, which was a mistake, I should have made sure the glass covered that, was a part of the problem. And in this case, there's no surface flow media, so 
there's nowhere for air to go. But the main bit of the panel looked pretty good. There's not any air in there. And the panel came out at about 10 ounces and an eighth and 285 grams, which was a little lighter than predicted, but it seems pretty solid and um, came out pretty nice. Thanks for checking out the Explore Composites Materials Library.